começar aqui o nosso, o nosso quarto dia. É... So, let's get started. Today we are in the fourth day um, of, of our e-course and today we are we are having two sections com, like the, the other days and the first one will be uh, about Bora. statistics uh, concerning um, migrations and that's why we have here today two experts in this subject Jess Merkens that you know already and Maria Payet which will present you this subject and and as we did, we are working at the same way. We can all, we can hear the presentation, of course, and and write our comments and questions in the chat box. And and I will put together all the questions. And in the end of the section, we are going to have time to answer them all. So feel free to to write what you want to write and, and make the questions you all doubt or um, everything you want to know so that by the end of the section we can answer every everyone so i think it's time to start with the presentations i really don't know if maria is going to start or if it will be jess the first one uh, jess Will be então, the first. <laughs> so, just the floor is yours. Bom, eu vou continuar agora em inglês porque. Welcome everyone to um, this Thursday morning session on uh, labor migration statistics in Southern Africa. My name is Jesse Mertens. I'm a technical officer in the for the SAM project, and we are joined this morning with uh, Maria Payet, the senior labor statistician for Southern Africa, and I'm sure she'll correct me if I got the title wrong. Um, I'll start with a very short uh, uh, few words of introduction, and then I'll, I'll pass the word over to Maria. Can I just confirm that uh, you can see the presentation on the screen? Excellent, thank you very okay. much. Great. Uh, so, very quickly, um, we'll go through some of the ILO's work on labor migration statistics covering um, statistical standards, the uh, International Conference on Labor Statisticians, some of the recent guidelines produced by the International Conference of Labor Statisticians, the labor migration database that uh, the ILO maintains, and we will look at um, suggestions for a uh, labor market observatory and minimum indicators on labor migration, followed by a short discussion on some of the data that's available and some of the limitations of that data at both global, uh, continental and sub-regional levels. And we can close off with uh, looking at, at uh, next steps towards better and more harmonized labor migration data in Southern Africa. Now, before I give the word to Maria, I would like to very quickly um, ask everybody in um, uh, in, in, in the audience, all the participants, uh, during the presentation to reflect on a, s a set of questions. And we'll come back to this a little bit later in the presentation, and hopefully we can discuss some of it towards the end. But what I would like to start off with is that you reflect on the kinds of data and statistics, labor migration data and statistics, that you need or use most frequently in your position within your institution. And uh, please just... Uh, um, Think of this during the presentation and, and put some uh, some reflections in the comments. I'll kindly ask our moderators to keep an eye on those comments uh, as they come in, maybe to look for some some trends or um, some arising arising issues that we might be able to point to towards the end. Um, and then we'll focus a little bit more on, on what kind of data we'd like to see a little bit later in the presentation. So having said that, I'll give the word to Maria Payet, who's going to start with looking at the ILO's work on labor migration statistics. Uh, Maria, the floor is yours. Okay. 
Maria, are you there? I think you might be muted still. Okay, so Maria, in Geneva, we have... Drawn... Oh, okay. okay, I've been unmuted now, right? <laughs> you can hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, so in Geneva, we've got uh, the um, statistics department. It's got uh, five uh, um, units, and one of the units is the statistical coordination and special topics unit. And uh, this is uh, the unit dealing with a, a, a number of things, actually, including labor migration. So what they do is they provide support to countries um, through the regional statisticians, such as myself. Um, for example, they advise on the methodologies for compiling labor migration statistics. They might advise on questions to be included in the questionnaire, um, such as for the labor force survey. Um, at this point, I want to say that they have done a lot of work with regards to stock data, but they still face a challenge with the data on flows because uh, a lot of times this is captured through administrative records, and I, and I will go a bit more in depth over this later. Um, so the standards do specify and encourage countries to use multiple data sources, but like I said, there's some work which needs to be done in this area, especially with admins data. Okay, so next slide. So the standards for measuring international migrants rest on the guidelines set by the 20th ICLS. So I am, I am not sure, but uh, perhaps you have gone over this in the past days. Um, so as you know, international labor migration is of concern. So it is increasingly becoming a, um, a concern, a policy priority. So there is a need to respond to the interest of countries of origin, but also of countries of destination, and also to look into the welfare of the migrant workers. So if we want to create proper policies around this, um, the policies must be based on strong evidence. So this is why we have standards, and this is why standards are set. So these guidelines are aimed to, set, to support countries so that they can develop the national statistical system and uh, we hope, it is hoped that the guidelines help countries to develop um, data on the socio-demographic characteristics of the migrants, for example, to look at their conditions of work, to look at, at their treatment, are they, are they being treated equally, fairly, and to look at the um, disadvantaged groups, even within the migrant population. Okay, next, next slide. So um, I will start off uh, by uh, going over some definitions. Note that um, um, labor migration statistics is a course in itself. So there is no way I will do it justice in only a few minutes. So here we're just um, touching base. Um, and can I say whetting your appetite and hoping that, that you get the interest to attend the course that is being planned, I think for April for the SAM project. So when uh, we refer to international migrants, we refer to all those residents of a country who have ever changed their country of usual residence. Um, so in keeping in line with uh, what the Citoyen dans un autre ou, ou, persons who are usual residents of that country and who are citizens of another country, meaning the foreign population, or whose place of birth is located in another country. So here we're talking about the foreign born population. Okay, yeah, so let's break it down a bit further. So the foreign population of a country includes all persons who do not have citizenship of the country of their usual residence. Um, they can be foreign born or native born. Now the foreign born population of a country includes all persons who have that country as the country of their usual residence and whose place of birth is located in another country. Okay, so um, on the previous slide, we defined international migrants as all persons who are usual residents of a country and who are citizens of another country, meaning they can be foreign population or foreign born. 
So what does country of usual residence mean? So here it refers to where the person lives, so where the person normally spends their daily period of rest. So in terms of statistics of international labor migration, what we're saying is that the reference population is the usual population, right? But it goes beyond this. So um, for the purpose of, of measuring, for the purpose of these guidelines, the reference population also includes persons who are not usual residents in the country, but who are in the labor force or they are in the potential labor force of that country. So they have, they have an attachment. So here we're, we're including groups such as frontier workers, seasonal workers, um, even uh, undocumented migrants. Okay, next slide. So in order to, to establish migrant status, we need information on both country of destination and country of origin. Next slide. And there are two criteria for defining international migrants. So to establish the migrant status, we have place of birth and then we have citizenship. So at the end of the day, we want to disaggregate what we call our stock indicators. I will, I will go over them later. We want to disaggregate our stock indicators by migrant status, meaning either by place of birth or by citizenship, depending on which uh, data is available. Some countries might have both, some countries might have only one. Um, but uh, if we can choose one, then we will go with place of birth. Um, it is a bit more relevant and it helps to avoid duplicates. Next time. Okay, so this one, yes. Um, so now, now let's look, let's go in depth with the concepts. So the, the term international labor migration is used um, in the guidelines. It is a generic, generic term, um, which covers the following three concepts that you see here. So international migrant workers, for work international migrants, and return international migrant workers, and we will go over each one in turn. Next slide. Okay, so here it is just a summary of the measurement criteria. So they are the migrants, who are they? They are moving from one country to another. Um, they need to cross the border and there is a change in their usual residence. And uh, we're also considering the, the duration of stay. So usually a person is considered a migrant if the person has stayed in the country for at least three months. Next, next slide. So who are the international migrant workers? So the concept of international migrant workers is meant to measure two things. Firstly, it seeks to measure the current labor attachment of international migrants in the country. So regardless of why they migrated. So as long as you're a migrant, you are a usual resident. We want to know about your labor attachment, if, even if originally you did not migrate to the country for work purpose. So secondly, this measure takes into account others who are not usual residents of the country, but they have a current labor attachment in the country of measurement. So in this context, when we use the term international migrant workers or international migrant and non-resident foreign workers, we, we don't know about the same thing. So in other words, for statistical purpose, international migrant workers are all persons of working age present in the country of measurement. So they are either usual residents, um, meaning they are international migrants who during a specified time were in the labor force of the country, either in employment or in unemployment. As we know, labor force consists of all those who are either employed or unemployed, both of these groups, or not usual residents or non-resident foreign workers, meaning persons who during a specified reference period were not usual residents of the country, but they were present in the country and they had a labor attachment, meaning they were either in employment or they were looking for work and available to start working according to the 19th ICLS guideline. So next slide. Uh, Maria, yes. Maria, uh, yes. ju just just one one observation. Uh, we have few participants that uh, uh, that mentioned that uh, your presentation is a little bit too fast, that they are fast. having trouble with following. Ah, it's too fast, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me, let me try and go slow. <laughs> okay, I'm so, but, uh, but, uh, but I do understand. I mean, uh, it, it is not uh, intuitive in the sense that you have to get your hand around it. So let me, let me try and go slowly. So perhaps also this slide can help here. 
Okay, so here on this slide, we've got the main elements of the measurement of international migrant workers. So they are represented in this diagram. Okay, so it, th there is a country in the green rectangle here. And the country consists of both resident population, this is the green part, and the international migrants, and they are within the blue part, the blue within the green. Um, so the labor force of the country consists of those who are considered as employed and those who are unemployed. We know this. This is a, the definition for labor force. And the labor force consists of those who are in the resident population, also those who are international migrants, and even those who during a specified reference period were not usual residents of the country, but they were present in the country and they had a, um, a labor attachment in the country. Uh, meaning they were either in employment or they were looking for work, available to start working, and they are the yellow bit in the rest of the world box. Um, so now the international migrant workers, and they are those uh, in the labor force. So the labor force is the yellow box. They are in the labor force as international migrants. So they are the red within the yellow within the blue. And also those who are not usual residents, but they have a labor attachment. So they are the red within the yellow within the black. 